welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. I've got my coffee and uh, I'm on a project today. It's a, I'll have a little drink if you don't mind. Oh, that's good. I like it black. Anyway, so I, what I have today in this video, I'm installing a set of shocks on the Prairie Dory. It was one of the parts of the project that we didn't complete. We rushed it to the door to go camping pretty quick, but now it's time to put the shocks on. These shocks I got from my best friend, uh, Jeff Bezo. There are, they are Monroe shocks. They're for uh, 84 to 87 Corvette rear shocks. I uh, might be wrong on those dates, but it's in that range. And I got them because uh, when they're fully compressed, they are only a little over nine inches and they have a four and a half inch stroke. So this little trailer only needs about two and a half inches of movement. So I'll be putting these shocks on and then I'll be compressing it to about midway point and uh, we'll go from there. They have a half inch hole on the top and five eighths on the bottom. So I have a piece of five eighths ready rod and I have a piece of five inch or five eighths stock, just round steel, round stock. I also have some round stock threaded, uh, partially threaded of half inch that I'll be using for the upper supports. The bottom, like I said, these are five eighths, top is uh, half inch. If you're interested in uh, the part number of these, I'll just show you there. I can't read it, I don't have my glasses on, but that may be helpful. All right, 5893, Monroe 5893 for these shocks. Anyway, that's what we're doing today. So I'll get a set up underneath and I'll get some, uh, some tools dug out so you don't have to wait for me to do that. And let's get on it. Okay, over by the trailer wheel. So I've got my coveralls on because I'm going to be going underneath this thing. Here's the, the piece that I'm going to use for the upper mount. I mean, the plan is to drill a hole through this piece here because this is the uh, spring leaf carrier for this trailer. It's quite heavy. So I'm going to bring it forward. I'll take this wheel off and I'm going to have to drill holes through this carrier similar to that where that bolt is sitting there now but forward further. This is for the retainer for the rear spring. These just slide on the on that. They're a slip setup and anchored at the front. But I want to get the uh, shocks as close to 90 as I can. This trailer doesn't have a lot of uh, roll to it but it has bounce. Like So uh, when we went camping I noticed there was no shaking in the trailer or anything because I bounced the tires but there was uh, when you go over a bump it would it, the whole trailer would kind of hop a tiny bit so I want to try to mitigate a lot of that and hopefully these shocks will do it uh, not that it hurts the trailer I mean there was no pounding or smashing or anything like that anyway so what I'm going to do is pull the wheel off and then I'll start drilling hole I'll get my drill stuff and I'll drill the holes where I want it to put where I want to put it uh, in relation to the axle all right so I'll be right back
I've got the holes drilled and I've got the piece of uh, stock. It's actually uh, hangers for concrete uh, hangers. It's half inch stock. So I'm getting set up now to weld it. And I'll just show you quickly underneath what it looks like if I can without jostling you around too much. Get my welder's helmet on so it's going to be a hit. There we go. So there it is there. So I'll weld both sides. I got washers in there. I'll pull it to pull it tight. And that's it. I'll get this welded in. And then I'll have to build the lower bracket and it'll hang down a ways. Okay, this is what I've got done for a bracket. A uh, hanger or rather, a shock hanger. So what it is is a piece of two inch uh, tube steel. Right here, there's the one I'm gonna do on the second piece. Eight inches long. I sliced this out, this is where the axle will fit. Five eighths hole for the lower shock uh, bolt. So what I did, I just sliced it. I wanted it to be not 90 degree. I didn't want it to come like this, so I wanted it to be more on a 45. So I, I did an inch, I cut an inch wedge out over to here. So I'll bring it into zero out to an inch. So it gave me this angle right here. So I'll fit it on the, on the rig. And if it looks good on the rig, I'll make another one and I'll paint them up, uh, sand them down and paint them up and uh, install them. This one here, this here is going to have a bolt through above the axle, so right about here, because uh, I don't want to weld it on just yet. But even after I weld it on, I still leave the bolt in just in case the welds break. Uh, I'm not that confident in my welds sometimes. <laughs> yeah, these turned out all right. But if you can say the word porosity, I'm sure it's in there. You'll find porosity in there somewhere. But anyway, that's what I'm doing. And uh, I'll get another one built. I'll try it first, and then I'll get another one built. And if it looks good, that's what we're going with. Be painting them up and going with them. Okay, I got one mount uh, roughed up. I got the bolt in place. Welded in for the upper mount, and the lower mount is... Uh, roughed in and just clamped down the vice grip and I'll put a bolt a bolt through here. I'm not going to weld it onto the to the axle yet until I want to test this out. So the main feature on this was to keep it above the the rim. So if it did get a flat tire this wouldn't drag on the ground. That's five and a half inches up from the ground up. I measured my ranchero and uh, the ranchero was six and a half inches so it's an inch lower than the ranchero but i mean the ranchero is like a truck this should be okay we're not going on uh it's not an off-road rig so anyway this is the how it's going to look on both sides so now that i have this one fabbed and i won't i won't be using threaded rod for this i'll be i'll get an actual 5 8 bolt the right thing with you know lock washers and everything but yeah, that's it. So she's got lots of clearance for movement, but only, only enough clearance. It's just there. But when I set it down, this, the axle should come up a little bit. And there's quite a bit of room to move in here, which is nice. So there's lots of, lots of play. So that's good. We'll go with that. See how it goes. I can uh, modify it some if I have to, but I'm going to go with that for now. All right, the second one's coming along nice. I'm just starting to cut out the shock uh, space for the shock to travel, or not travel, but to sit. And I got the hole put in it, and I got the angle, and I've got it welded up. So yeah, I'll have a pair here pretty quick. This hole cut out for the axle, and what's left to do is to drill the hole, but I'm waiting until I can mark it when it's on the vehicle to make sure it's in the right spot. That's it. All right, there's uh, got that piece cut out. Do a little grinding, make it look like the other one, like that. Just you know, it's rough. It's only a shock uh, support. So yeah, the old welding not bad. Some pretty good penetrations come right through. Well, that should hold well. Been a long time since I stick welded. It's not pretty in there, but we'll get her. So I'll get this ground up. And then we'll have a pair of them, and I'll uh, clean them up, paint them up, and they'll be ready to go on. There we are, all cleaned up, ready for paint. 
Not bad. Good enough for this buggy. What I use to, uh, on my grinder is these Scotch Brite uh, rust remover things. Scale remover, I guess they're called. They work really good and they last a long time as long as you don't run them on the edges. If you're just running on a flat surface, you don't run them on, if you run them on this kind of stuff, it'll cut them up real quick. But on flat surfaces, man, it cleans it up nice quick. All right, so I'll get them painted up and uh, we'll get them on the vehicle. All right, there they are, all painted up. It's the next day now, I let them sit overnight. So now I decided I'm gonna go with two holes in here to hold this on, these on the axle. So I'll have two bolts side by side. That'll give it better uh, sideways motion support. All right, let's get them down. Get the holes drilled in them for the axle hole, axle bolt holes, and install them. Okay, there's the shocks on. I'm not overly thrilled with the travel on them. There's not a lot of travel left. So this one over here on the right side isn't isn't too bad, but I think this one is a little tight. So I've been thinking about this. And I'm not going to make another video just to change it, but I think I'll, uh, I think I might make a bracket out of this stuff here, the same my same stock that I made this, this recycled stuff, and put it up in there, up above that, because it fits right in there nicely, and I can make a little, I can split that in half, and I can make two brackets, and that would give me you know another inch and a half probably of lift and if I move it back a little just a slight, slight bit further I get almost two inches more travel so that may be what I'm going to end up doing but for now I'm going to try this but I, I don't I don't think it's going to be enough but anyway I'll just go through what I did here just to recap um, drill two holes in uh, this bracket that I made 7 16 bolts Five eighths bolts there, half inch there. Uh, lock washers and whatnot on them, and that's it. That's the install on the Harbor Freight trailer for shock install on the Harbor Freight trailer. Okay, entire the same thing. So, but I'm gonna I'll try it. But I think this one here. I just think this one here is too not enough travel so I think I'll be making a bracket up out of this not a big deal it fits in there nicely and I'm sure that would give it enough support that I could bolt up through to clamp it on the same as this this piece is clamped on there's actually bolts right there already so I could just do the same drill up through and get it on there because they're already drilled up that way now and that will give me a solid bracket and it is it, this is a boxed uh, it's boxed here so it'll fit that fits in perfectly in that box that's two inch so then I could extend this up here and put a well to do the same as that here but put a bolt right through okay back under the trailer again and uh, I mentioned uh, I'm not happy with this setup here I don't think there's enough stroke left enough travel and that shock so if you've been uh, a little tip on how I work mentally is that if I'm not happy with something I'm probably gonna make the change so here I am so what I'm gonna do and I did mention uh, putting the block up here and that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna oh, get my fingers out of the way I'm going to uh, use some two inch stock up in here I'm gonna cut I got a cup a piece that I had yesterday because this is a day later now and I'm going to fit it in there and I'm going to bring, I'm going to get rid of this, this uh, half inch stud. I'm going to cut that right off there. And then I'm going to put the two inch up in there with uh, tabs welded on it on each side. So they, it can go up in there and it can come down and then I can put bolts through the tabs right here wherever I need it. So I need the shock to be somewhere in this area right directly above where this one is. So that will give me another uh, roughly... Well, it's a two inch stock, so if I go up half and half, so it should be going up two inches. So two inches more travel up to there. I can't go up higher because then the top of the shock will be hitting the, 
the wood because it does stick down a little bit beyond the, the box of the frame. So anyway, that's what I'm up to. I'm modifying the, the work. Uh, small job. Just cut that off and build that. So pretty straightforward. I'll probably put a couple of self tappers in it coming through from the other outside in just to hold it there. But I mean, once it's bolted down in here, it won't go far. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. So I'll get at her. Here's the two pieces I'm going to use. They're roughly five inches long. They're not exactly the same length, but it'll be good for what I'm doing. So I'll be drilling a hole and I have to be careful. I have a three quarter and a one inch marked off. But I think the, the three quarter will be too close to the bottom of the trailer now that I'm putting these up in, the, in that box area. So I'm going to have to go midway, drill some holes, and then weld in my half inch uh, threaded stock. That's what I'm up to. Okay, this is what I'm looking at. Still a little hot, so I'm just gonna gently touch it. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a hole there and a hole there, and then I'll drill them right through once I get them placed. And this is where the half inch will be. And then when I get rid of the stud, I'll slide it over there. And actually, that's not even a bad spot for it. Maybe a little forward, more forward. Yeah, so that'll be it. So I have two of those already made like that. So I have to get the stud welded in. First I'll drill a couple of holes, stud weld it in, cut that off, and uh, be ready to install it. Paint them up, then ready to install them. Okay, I got these all welded up. And I want to mention again, I use all my, uh, these are all scraps of wood, uh, iron. Um, they came from the old truck. When I took the bed off the old truck, these are all bits of tube steel. Reuse what I can. These were in pretty decent shape. Anyway, so uh, holes that will take 7 16 bolts. The half inch uh, stud for the shock is on there. Weld it up on, uh, well, on that side. And they're hot, so I'm not going to touch them. It goes right through. Weld it on both sides. So I'll give them a little... Uh, Rub down with a flapper wheel and uh, get a coat of paint on them and then I'll install them. Okay, I'm here taking the shock off. Get my gloves back on. I just think the camera started. There we go. These gloves are pretty good. They're by Home Hardware, the protector. French and English. Pretty good gloves. I recommend them. Got them cheap at, at Princess Auto. They hold up really well. Not Princess Auto, but home, uh, home Hardware, rather. Anyway, so I'm pulling the shock off here. Got the bolts out almost. Now I just got to give it a little pry. Getting ready to, to line up this. There we go. You get the new bracket I built on. Man, that one's in there. Must have pinched it tight when I tightened it down. Anyway, she coming. There it is. There. Pull that off. Get it out of the way. So these washers will be using again. I gotta cut this off, grind that down. And then I have the, the new bracket right here. Get it out. And the new bracket will go up in there like so like that and like I said I may just get rid of this move this forward a little bit not to get rid of the stud inside and drill two holes and I think probably it's definitely gonna have enough uh, stroke now because it's all the way up almost to the top of the shock so that's gonna be really good yeah that's gonna work really well Well, that's good. So we'll go with that. Let me get this done and I'll get back to you. All right. We got one shock on in place. I like that much better. It's uh, when the wheel's off, it's the full stroke of the shock pretty much available. So when I put the wheel back on, it'll have the whole, it'll work really well. So there's just enough room behind those bolts. I'll probably... I'll keep an eye on them. I don't want to tack them just yet because I want to test drive this buggy like this. 
and if it works well I'll tack those nuts so they can't break free same as this one because it's just out even flush but yeah that's uh, that's the one side on so let's get the other side on and we'll call her a day on it okay there you go there's a set of Corvette shocks on a Harbor Freight style trailer I'm very pleased with this one now this setup because there's lots of uh, lots of stroke left in it lots of travel room for the shocks I can get down in here and show you so this line right about there is where they bought them out at and then the, the upper part the housing is is up about here or right about there inside so we get lots of room to uh, bounce around on I still need to put one bolt in in behind here missing a bolt went through my bolt supply couldn't find the uh, one I liked or a new one but that's it I feel much better about it now than I did uh, yesterday when I was fiddling around with those other mounts so yeah that's a set of mid 80s Corvette shocks installed on a Harbor Freight Canadian Tire, I don't know who else sells these, you know, 1,200 or less pound trailers like this, the bolt together ones. So uh, I'll end the video here now, and I uh, really appreciate you stopping by and uh, watching me do this. And uh, sometimes you have to do some rework. This job took me about <clears throat> five hours, including the rework. So the old saying is, if you don't have enough time to do it right the first time, you probably don't have enough time to do it the second time. But anyway, I seem to have some time, so that's what I did. All right, thanks a lot. And we'll see you in the next one.